So today we're going to be carrying on uh, with freedom from fear. Uh, carries on from last week's teaching about how we are children of God and not bound by a spirit of fear. And uh, so today we want to look at the glorious freedom that the cross has brought us from living in fear, living in condemnation, living in fear of punishment and how Jesus as we know, took our punishment on the cross. So we're not called to live in fear. But you know, one of the biggest um, spirits that is so rife today in amongst us is a religious spirit. And so this, this is going to kind of overlap between being free from fear, but also being free from actual demonic spirits of religion. You see, the devil loves religion, and we know the devil's a liar. He loves getting us bound up into religion. And religion at its core is working out our relationship with a God. So it's like doing stuff <clears throat> to get into right relationship with whatever God we believe in. And that is not, let me just say, Christianity. Proper Christianity, biblical Christianity is not religion. It is relationship. It is about having a right relationship with the Creator God of the universe who created us for relationship. As we saw in the garden, He wanted relationship. He said He foreknew us. He made us with a purpose because He's a loving God. And, the, and it says God is love. And the God of love loves loving. <laughs> and He creators not as robots to serve him not as slaves but as children and in fact the ultimate relationship is is described as a bride <laughs> that's that's the degree of intimacy that god wants with us as it says in the scriptures we are the bride of christ so <clears throat> religion there's a big difference between a spirit of religion and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. And I just want to contrast the two today because a religious spirit induces fear in people. People end up serving their God through fear. As I say, whether it's Hinduism or Buddhism or um, Islam and, or, or actually religious Christianity, it's fear-based. It's like you better serve God, otherwise you're going to be punished and you're going to be cast aside and cursed if you don't do the right things if you don't do like the right rituals if you if you don't sacrifice yourself enough and and we know even the old demonic gods of the old testament that fear was so strong that they used to even sacrifice their children on the altar you know molech and dagon and those those demonic gods and they all demanded sacrifice you you were you know you were there to appease them it was a fear-based. Ancestral worship in Africa is fear-based. You better appease your ancestors or you're going to get it, you know. <laughs> Man, that's not a good thing to live under. It's not good to live under fear. And I believe a lot of sickness and disease is fear-induced, fear fear-based. So religion is a fear of punishment. Not doing the right thing. Religion leads to condemnation. Now we know Romans 8 1 says, For now there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. Wow, that's good news. See, religion is like, hey, you do the wrong thing, you're going to die. But Jesus is, do the wrong thing, I will forgive you, I will show you grace, and I will show you how to live right by my Spirit. It's very interesting, you see, we, it talks about us being sons of Abraham in the book of Galatians. Yes, we're sons of God, but we, our spiritual father actually was Abraham. So it says, through the, the nations of the earth will be blessed through Abraham. And Abraham's life and Sarah's life is very, very interesting because they were before the law, before the Ten Commandments, before the 613 Jewish laws given to Israel at Mount Sinai. There was this man, Abraham and his wife. And God visited them and God gave them promises in, in their latter years when Abraham was 80, you know, that they would have children. And, and if you look at Abraham's life, everything they put their hand to, Abraham and Sarah were blessed in every way. And it says, we are their children. Abraham did not live in that wrong fear of God. He, he respected God. 
in, in he, he reverenced God, but God came and sat and ate with him. And, and, and he actually changed God's mind. You know, he sat there arguing with God saying, hey, you know, what about Sodom and Gomorrah? Have you considered my servant Lot and all these things? And, and so Abraham had this intimate relationship where he was able to sit and prepare food and feast with God. It's amazing. It's an amazing story. And it says Abraham believed God and his righteousness, his right standing was credited to him because he believed. And in fact, Abraham pre-met Jesus as Melchizedek, the king of righteousness, and broke bread and drank wine with him, symbol of the new covenant. <laughs> That's amazing. And it says the gospel was announced to him beforehand. The good news, the good news of Jesus was announced to Abraham beforehand. See, a pre-incarnational visit of Jesus with Abraham. So we see this one man, Abraham, he didn't live in fear, he lived in faith. You see, religion, you live in fear. Relationship, you live in faith. Like I have faith in my wife. <laughs> and she has faith in me. We have faith in our love for each other. That's a picture of, of what we call to live in, in with, with God. Is, is that faith relationship of love based on love. On the other hand, you had Moses. See, we are not called sons of Moses, by the way. We are called sons of Abraham. And if you look at Moses, Moses actually epitomizes religion. And I'm not going to go into this another teaching, but Moses was an angry man. He was always angry with Israel. And at Mount Sinai, you know, the Israelites saw God and they quaked in fear. And, and you know, and it's because of their hard heartedness, they chose religion before relationship. And, you know, religion is about getting right with your God whatever religion it is, through doing work. So Israel said, just tell us what to do and we'll do it. <laughs> and they constantly lived in fear of God and the judgment of God because they rejected relationship and they chose religion. And even today, that same religious spirit is amongst us as Christians and we need to recognize it and we need to cast it out and we need to repent of it. <laughs> and let me tell you something, you know, pre grace, actually, preaching grace stirs up the religious spirit like you cannot believe. <laughs> you see, with religion, you're always doomed to failure. You're always doomed to condemnation. That's what Israel did. They tried to obtain their own righteousness, their own right standing with God through their works, and it says they failed. I think it's Romans 9. See, religion is always trying to get right by works and you fail and then you get angry and you get resentful and you get bitter. But our relationship, we're not called to be religious Christians. That's, a fa That's why you see so many people who call themselves Christians and they're in re into religion, but they don't have relationship. And that's why they, they fall away. That's why they go off and do weird stuff, fall into sin, because by the way, religion... And law, legalism, it says law, the, the laws of religion cause us to sin. It provokes sin. And again, uh, you can look, at, look that up. That's in Romans 6 and Romans 7. But we are in relationship by grace, in with a loving Father, by faith. And we have faith in Him. Not faith in ourselves, faith in Him. That's, that's relationship. See, the religion relationship is one of a servant or a slave or a worker. And it always leads to fear because, you know, when you're a servant, a slave or a worker, you're always afraid of getting fired. <laughs> you know, some of you work for a boss, you know, you better work hard, otherwise you're going to get fired. And, you know, in Galatians, it says we are no longer slaves, but sons, by which we call Abba Father. And again, also, it reveals that we are to live in a loving, intimate relationship. We now can approach the throne of God's grace boldly, not with fear, not with trembling, not under that old covenant, but with joy. We join in, join in the assembly of joy, the new covenant of joy. <laughs> it's such good news. But sadly, you, maybe you like me, you know, I grew up in religion. And I'm not trying to knock any church group or denomination but let me be honest i grew up in in an anglican environment and nobody told me that i had to have a relationship with god or even that that was possible but it was religion 
You know, I was a choir boy. <laughs> and I remember the free priest used to beat us if we weren't on time. And uh, man, it was hectic. And many of us have grown up in that puritanical religion stuff where we've got to do, 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 do for God. Always feeling condemned, always feeling useless, never feeling good enough. That's religion. And by the way, religion leads to self-righteousness. If you want to know if a person's got a religious spirit, they self-righteous. They're always judgmental of other people. And you know what? They hate grace. <laughs> grace, grace makes them angry. <laughs> You see it all the time. You see this hateful Christianity where people are, you know, wanting to cast, send people to hell and curse people. And it's horrible. That's not, that's not the spirit of Jesus. See, Jesus didn't in, invoke fear. He invoked love and grace and he drew sinners to himself. The sinners were attracted to Jesus. <laughs> it was the religious people that hated Jesus, the Pharisees. You see, the religious spirit was the very spirit that murdered Jesus, that stuck him on the cross, that forced, well, not forced him, Jesus went willingly to the cross, but it was those religious Pharisees, those law keepers that hated Jesus, hated the grace that he was bringing in, the forgiveness of sins. And they basically, religious spirit is always a murderous spirit. It hates grace. It hates hates it when we talk about God's love and God's grace and God's forgiveness. It's always, yeah, but you need to do more for God. <laughs> and religious people love, they're full of pride. They, th they always think they're better than other people. And sadly to say, you see it. A lot of, and a lot of Christians, they, they like so pride-filled and hateful of anybody who doesn't make their standards. And that is a religious spirit and we need to be free of it. You see, the Holy Spirit is in complete contrast to a religious spirit. A religious spirit is condemnatory, judgmental, self-righteous, full of pride, based on works. The Holy Spirit is full of grace, love, forgiveness, power to do signs and wonders and miracles. <laughs> And I don't know what you want, but I don't want a religious spirit. And I used to have a religious spirit. You know, maybe even now, sometimes I can get a little bit religious. <laughs> and I've got to check myself. You know, we've got, got to be on our guard against religion, guys. We are not to promote a Christian religion. We are called to promote relationship, intimacy with God the Father through the Son and by the, sealed by the Holy Spirit, the gift of God is intimacy. The Holy Spirit draws those who are bound by sin because people do want to be free. And you know what? Today, if you, if you don't know that intimacy with God, it's yours. You can repent to religion. You can confess your sin of religion <laughs> and, and be in judgmental and condemnatory of others thinking that you can attain to the holiness of God through your good works and your law keeping. You can, you, can, you can repent. You can turn away and say, I recognize that is evil. I recognize that's bad. Uh, for those of you who love repentance and confession, repent, confess, let Jesus into your life. There's nothing wrong with those things, but they don't save us. They start us, can start us on the journey into Christ. So if you've never done that, you can ask Jesus, come into my life today, Lord. Lord, I, I set aside my religion. Maybe there's people here who have been Christians their whole life. But as I'm talking, you realize it's been about religion and not relationship. It's been about function. It's been about you being God's servant. Let me just say, I serve God, but I serve him as a son. IDB, in my daddy's business. Sorry, that's in my daddy's business. That's IMDB. In my daddy's business. I'm about my father's business. And I serve him because I'm a son. I'm not a servant in the house. I am, I, I am in a sense, enslaved to righteousness. My whole life is given over to him. But those are not my primary identities. And, you know, yes, I have a reverent awe of God, a, a correct fear. You know, I used to, you know, fear my dad, my natural dad. But he, I knew I loved him and he loved me. But, but I had awe and respect. And the same, that's the kind of righteous fear we have of God. Not this fear of punishment. And uh, 1 John chapter fear, it says, 
for perfect love of God casts out fear because fear has to do with punishment. You see, and what John's saying there is saying we don't live like that anymore. We don't live in, in this like, oh, I can't go near God. Um, like I've just got to prove myself all the time. That's not what we're called to live in. God's saying, hey, you're my sons and my daughters. Come get up on my lap. Abba, call me daddy. <laughs> the Jewish word Abba is daddy. Oh, <laughs> wow. Who would ever dream we could come into such a beautiful relationship with God? I never knew that while I was growing up because I grew up in Christian religiosity. And it made me, it drove me away from God and it drove me into the new age where I was looking for intimacy. But at 35 years of age, praise God, someone helped me to understand the Holy Spirit was calling me into intimacy with God. And that surely is good news. So I just want to pray now against any religious spirit. So may, if you feel you have a religious spirit, in the name of Jesus, your religious spirits, I command you in Jesus' name to lift off, to get out, I cast you out, I drive you out, I break you, I expose you in the name of Jesus. You free the people of God in the name of Jesus. You cease your religious condemnation and division in the name of Jesus and get off and get out. Because we are temples of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. <laughs> and if you need more prayer in that area, give us a ring, call us. We've got a team that will pray for you.